Do you think you're at your peak or is there more to come? Can't really peak too much more than winning the Olympics and World Series, same year. You see your competitors, you can kind of look in their eyes, you can see that, okay, they realize that they have lost. Boost of good feeling, uh, making other people losing to me. Like an ass with the devil, I'm a whole nother level in the danger zone. From Norway being kind of not present at all in triathlon to now be up there as one of the bigger nations. It's obviously uh, cool and also to see kind of where we've been able to bring the whole team. So it's not just about one or two athletes, but it's kind of the team culture and group that we're training together with. And uh, to see that everyone is kind of shining through, it's really cool. Coming from Norway, all of us kind of really love kind of being outside, uh, training, being active, being on the bike, running in the mountains. So I think we all have kind of that pure love of training. And, uh, and I think that's important because in triathlon, you don't race too often. We uh, have to really love kind of the daily life and not just the weekends. Yeah, I think I was uh, quite hyperactive as a child needed to have kind of all kinds of sports to just burn off the energy I was uh, sitting on. So uh, I think that's kind of something I'm just bringing into my adult life. But uh, in general, I just loved doing kind of all kinds of sports and like from hiking in the mountains, cycling, watching uh, Tour de France uh, in the summer. The reason why I bought my first road bike wasn't because of triathlon. It just looked so cool to be riding uh, like they did in the Tour. And then, yeah, jumped into triathlon because uh, it's maybe no better, better place to combine all the three disciplines and you can really maximize your, the 24 hours of day you have. People always kind of ask like, what's your hobby outside of the sport? What do you do when you have three sessions per day and then putting in the meals? Yeah, it's not really too much spare time. Hobby wise, I don't do too much. Like it's watching uh, Netflix or listening to a podcast or something like that. It doesn't bother me that I don't do too much outside of sport. I feel that uh, the sport is uh, giving me so much and it, take, it takes so much of my time. So, uh, and it's kind of my hobby. I feel that I'm doing my hobby and I also get paid for doing it. So I would rather look at it as a privilege. The race for me is kind of the big party of the whole weekend. I don't need to go out. When I'm done, it's uh, all about doing the recovery as good as possible because I want to have another party in another city, in another part of the world uh, a few weeks later. I've been training with Gustav for maybe 10 years. I think it was like in 2009 when we started off with the national team. It was just myself and uh, three other boys. A year or two later, Gustav and his brother came in. Since then, I've been training, traveling all around the world with Gustav and uh, still being able to keep that kind of friendship from uh, being uh, junior athletes, kind of dreaming big, taking over the world, you know, trying to take over the Ironman scenes, daring to dream big. And uh, we also, when we go out loudly and saying that we want to win all races, we have to kind of back it up with the training. It's probably my biggest, kind of rival or enemy going into the race, the fitter I am and kind of helping him getting fitter, the more tricky it will be winning on the race day. But again, I think uh, the ultimate success for both of us is take one, two, and then both of us obviously want to win the race and get the teammate on second. It takes off a bit of the pressure, I guess, because uh, if I have a bad day, kind of he can still be up front and kind of take that win for the Norwegian team. So. Uh, it's uh, also more enjoyable traveling around the world with your best friends rather than just winning on your own. How would you describe Gustav Eden? Gustav Eden, he is a clown. 
yeah, so he's the the funny guy in the group in the same time very serious with his training. A guy I've been enjoying training with for many, many years. We are at a similar level, but we're also able to help each other. As an athlete, I think Gustav is very, very tactical. Uh, maybe more the kind of the engine based of us. Kind of I can do a bigger volume of work than he can do. He often comes out as a more clever guy of us. When we talk about the Olympics games, for example, he and I say, oh, I was so good tactical there. He just say, no, you wasn't. Even a monkey would have won with your shape. So he doesn't give me any credit for my tactic in Tokyo. So that's kind of unfair. But I think I've kind of learning by the years to be more and more tactical. We have the same kind of training regime with very scientific approach. So we have a little bit different profile in terms of how we respond on the lactate. Uh, but different there, I think that I just enjoy maybe racing a little bit more than he does. His weaknesses is that he doesn't enjoy pain. Gustav Eden doesn't enjoy pain. That, that's what we say within the team, like uh, uh, that's why he fits for long distance, because he wants to have it comfortable. I think what's making triathlon so great is that it's not just kind of a place for the professional. If you are 40, 35, have done sport in 10, 15, 20 years, and kind of an easy way to step into the sport again, getting some motivation. It's very easy to stay motivated when you have three different sports to do, mixed with the age groupers and also the professional, and also the fact that we are racing the same course. Uh, it's kind of really bringing kind of the uh, unique atmosphere to the race and the venue and the whole race week. The community is really good, like in triathlon, like uh, everyone is, uh, doing it because they love the sport. You have so many winners uh, after a race, so I think that's good to see too. So here we are, live from the mountains in Sierra Nevada, putting in the foundation to beat the out of everyone. I'm not sure how other athletes see me. It's like it's not too often the athlete comes up to camp to see the training we do. Not sure, maybe a little bit of cocky, kind of we're going out, we're dreaming big, we want to win everything. And maybe I feel that they sometimes feel that we're stepping on their toes. The ones who's been doing Ironman for a long time feel that, uh, oh, you can't just come here and say that you want to win first time trying. Yeah, I think we have more respect for the challenge than maybe the competitors that we're racing. Who's the biggest threat? Gustav and Jan. I don't know, Lionel maybe? Like he has more experience over the Ironman distance. I think Jan has a bigger peak performance like we saw last year in Tri-Battle and the few appearances he has done. He has the course record in uh, Hawaii. So uh, he has been the man to beat, but I'm not sure where he is fitness wise. Like we haven't seen him since 2019 racing properly. What uh, it's inspiring me the most is the races itself. It's not necessarily the athlete. For the last 10 years, I had one goal and to win the Tokyo games. I remember running around in the athlete village. I was just thinking that just to be here doesn't give me anything like I need to come out of this race with at least a medal. If not, it will be like three months of just depression after the race. So I really had it kind of like black and white uh, going into that race. Very simple, I had to win that race. So uh, I think I'm more getting inspired by big challenges and uh, trying to win and overcome and beat athletes. Well, I think you can't really pick too much more than winning the Olympics and World Series same year. This year, it's very, very different, kind of completely twisting around the mindset of training. Twist the kind of the slow twitch into a little bit more faster switch uh, going into uh, Paris Olympic Games again and see if I can defend the title. When you first start winning, you just want to win more and more and more and bigger races. Like one of my favorite moments is obviously touching the tape, like at the finish line, that's always nice. But also the moment when you're kind of doing these kind of um, dead turns, running around the coin cone and then you see your competitors you can kind of look in their eyes you can see that okay they realize that they have lost that's just giving me a massive uh, boost of good feeling uh, making other people losing to me yeah I think it's good to have kind of uh, uh, healthy 
rivals in the sport making people getting motivated to beat each other i think it's just good so my biggest rival in now this season is for sure jan ferdino and gustav eden jan ferdino maybe the best businessman in triathlon and also backed it up with olympic gold and the most successful triathlete I think my strength is kind of the mental strength and also the capacity. I'm probably not the best runner, but I can still beat everyone on the on the race day. Kind of physiologic wise, it's the engine. I have a huge capacity and uh, my biggest weaknesses, I guess, in general is my speed, top speed. That's why I'm always attacking with like a K, a K and a half to go, because I know that if it comes down to the last 100 meters, I don't have much to, uh, to turn up with. Losing races is maybe more painful than the joy of winning the race itself. Of course, I've lost way more races than I've won. That's just a part of racing. To see how both myself, Gustav and the national team has been, has been able to kind of bring triathlon onto the map again. In Norway, getting more interest in the sport and also worldwide getting more kind of recognition of the hard training, the scientific approach that we have done. So of course it's cool to see that people are kind of opening up their eyes to see what we are doing. Not just following kind of what other people has done in the past. A few years ago people were kind of laughing of how much time we were uh, spending in the lab, but now people are trying to kind of copy what we have been doing. You see more and more people measuring the lactate, doing testing, going to the lab. Even though we see that they are trying to copy, we also know that they are like seven years behind us. We have done it for now six, seven, eight years. So it would kind of make uh, no sense if they can just kind of just turn around like this and then suddenly understand everything. And also I know that I'm working with the best people in the world in the business. So we really have like a good understanding of where the competitors is. What do you think it takes to be the greatest of all time? We don't really go too much based on time. It's more like the titles and what races you have won. And what he has done successfully is been in the sport for 13 years now. Like he won the Olympics in 2008. That was before I was uh, even uh, into triathlon. But hopefully I can kind of uh, within a shorter time frame, be able to win as many uh, titles that he has done. Hopefully in 10 years time, I would have completed Hawaii a few times. Uh, hopefully been back to the Olympics in Paris with success. And also I hope that I'm still able to enjoy the sport, having fun on the journey and that I'm not just doing it as a job, but that I'm able to keep it as a hobby.